Yeah, number eight, Mobile. Uh, thanks for uh, waving back up this way. 269 up here around uh, Flint, Michigan says hello and I hope you have a good weekend. I think I heard somebody say Preacher Man or something there. Go, come on in there. We did hear you. 269 Michigan looking. There's a whole bunch of guys keying down at once. It's kind of hard to hear. You kind of need a separator to kind of pull everybody out at once. It's a little difficult on my old uh, Mud Duck radio here. 269 anyways up here around Flint, Michigan. We're listening. Nice and clean on the output, it's not over mod. Danny in Alabama, so it's not definitely not going to be over mod. And I think that's what you wanted based on the message you sent me. You don't want it to have all that distortion and garbage. And these can turn out really clean when they're adjusted properly, so they got really good receivers in them too. How about it down there in DX land, 269 Michigan, looking. Yes, I don't have any mother nature on my side up here around Michigan, 269 Michigan, back out. This is on my antenna, and just to show you the power that your radio is doing, so how about it out there in Skip Land, Skip Land, 269 Michigan, break. I don't normally do a mommy antenna, I did set it up on the dummy load, but it's doing good. Um, dead key is about 25 on AM all the way up. You can run it like that if you want to. If you turn it down to about here, the notch below the middle, it's a little above eight, maybe just a little bit more. And it will still do quite a bit of power there, so I think we're on a clear channel. Hello radio, hello radio, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hello, check, check, one, two. Well, it still does pretty much the full power. So if you if you drop it below like the third was actually the fourth dot one two three four, it'll start to cut back the power. I have you where if you turn it all the way down, if you turn it all the way down, it's like two watts. So then it'll do quite a bit less there. So I'll leave that up to you on FM mode. All the way up is about a hundred which is a lot, so I wouldn't recommend running it that high for very long. And then um, all the way down should be the same, about two watts or so, right there. So that'll kind of give you some idea on FM. I would run it about 12 o'clock. You could run it all day like that on FM, but if you run it up any higher than that, the radio's gonna get super hot and that fan will just continually run. But on AM, you're probably okay to run it up all the time if that's what you want to do. Obviously, if you get close to somebody or something, then you know that's going to be a different story. You might want to back it down. Um, you can also, I don't know if you realize this, but this radio, when you key up, um, you can also hit the color button, and it changes the color here. 
It's a little hard to see, but it is changing color. So it's a dual color control. And that's for your SWR warning as well. And I think, does that, yeah, that doesn't change color when you modulate, I thought it did. But um, that's for like your SWR warning, it'll flash that color. I kind of like this color. It looks more like a white here, but on camera it looks more like, I don't know, like a diff like a pink almost, but it's not. I really like that white color. It looks pretty sharp, but um, it's all ready to rock and roll for you. These are really reliable radios here. The only thing I need to do really quick, and that's what I'm going to do off camera, is let this cool for a few minutes. And I'm going to set the frequency for you on transmit, because it's a little high on frequency right now. It's, um, well, I can't show it because it's not on the dummy load, but it was about 100 plus hertz high on frequency, which isn't really terrible um, in AM anyways, but we want it to be a little bit closer and I can get it a little bit closer for you. So other than that though, it's ready to head to you. So everything's working well on it. You got a 10KC here if you want to use that. And uh, you got other bands, but primarily probably you won't use a lot of those. Um, if you do ever run across one of the Ranger frequency counter uh, modules that plug in, you can plug that into this radio. It does accept it and then you could have a frequency display. But uh, more than likely, most guys won't ever leave band D, I think, with this radio. So, uh, But if you did, you could probably go down to that FM 26805 or something. And uh, I can show you where that is really quick. And now we're on the dummy load. Um, so when you're on full power on my dummy load, it shows about 30, all right there. So I didn't adjust it because when you go to FM at full power... It's actually just a little bit over. So I will adjust that because I want it to be a little more accurate. Um, I didn't realize that it wasn't as accurate as I thought. So I will adjust that for you real quick and I'll do the frequency. So here's the frequency. So it's like 170 hertz high or something. That's FM, I don't think it changes on AM, does it? No. So I'll try to get that closer for you if I can. All right, so we got the radio upside down to make the adjustment. So this is AM again, the high power. So now it's a little over 20 there, so that's better. And then on FM, it's still going to be around 100. Right there. Sorry, it's not really wanting to focus. There it goes. Actually, you're sitting at about 106. So um, you should be better there. Again, and that's just a, a guide. If your antenna isn't like fully resonant, in full resonance of the band, the channel that you're on, however you want to look at it, then probably that'll differ anyways. So, you know, I'm on a bird dummy load here, so it's pretty much good to go. But um, let me get your radio a little bit more on frequency. Okay, so that's much better right there. It's a little touchy, but I got it as good as I can. I'm going to put the lid back on and check it in a few minutes. Alright, so after a couple minutes, it's about... 20 hertz low, I'm going to try to correct that and then I'm going to call that good. Alright, there you go. That's, uh, that's going to be way better than what it was out of the factory. Just to show you again the power on the dummy low, because I was on the antenna, which I normally don't do, but this meter has a dual coupler. <coughs> so the antenna is on a coupler too. Um, when I'm on the dummy load, I'm pointing down where you see that little arrow. So. The dead key is about 26, and then we're swinging over 100 usually. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, check, 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 1, 2, 1, 2. So it does really nice power. And it's a really uh, good sounding radio too. really like these radios for what they are. I'm glad to see that I thought for a little while they quit making them because they were unavailable. But I'm glad to hear that they were back. And um, I'm really debating on keeping one for myself because I just heard rumors, uh, you know, that this one might go away and I, I would love to keep one for myself because I think it's a really cool radio and um, it just is one of those radios that if it ever goes away it's it's going to be one that and when I'm older maybe 20 years from now or something I could pull this up like man I miss these radios you know stuff like that it's kind of like a conversation piece 
because it's not made by the same factory as a lot of the other striker rails. This is a different factory, so um, I'd love to see one of these possibly with SSB. Although, I mean, the radio does drift a little bit, so that would be something we'd have to get used to again. But, um, I mean, even after I just made the adjustment, we're like 10 hertz, 12 hertz. So that's, that's acceptable. I don't know what a radio like this would do if it had SSB. But uh, I think we could make it work if it did. You know, there's plenty of room on a radio like this to give it SSB if they wanted to. Um, but just don't really know what's going to happen. But anyhow... Uh, the radio is all set, so I hope you enjoy it, and uh, thanks for your order, 73.